Boys, you are the few remaining. You are the strong. We may have had to cut tons of people from this team, but you, you remain. We may have fewer staff on hand than we did last season, but you remain. We may be 70 grand in debt, but you remain. I don't think they're going to buy it. Welcome back in, my friends. To the start of season four. It's not good. It's it's not good. Um... What, 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 I've already played the first two games of the season, which have gone surprisingly well. So that that's something going for us. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to get into the transfer window. The transfer window ends after the first two games of the season and see kind of where we were. And we just, I, we, we, we can't, we can't afford to bring anybody in. I, the board is willing to pay for it, but I just. We're broke, so I, I, oh, this is like the toughest challenge I think I've had in Football Manager, um, because the board's willing to invest, but I personally I just don't like to run a club in the red, and that keeps happening. And if like even if I go spend the money they're letting me, like we are going to absolutely tank financially. So I'm trying to like scrape by, and then if we have to in the summer transfer window, bring in a bunch of reinforcements, we'll do that. But as you can see, we got a win and a draw. We've not lost, and we played Cork City and Waterford. Oh, and you also notice this is probably the biggest news of the day. I finally went into my my uh, logo pack. It actually had the Waterford and Wexford logos in there. They were just tied to the wrong number if you know what i'm talking about inside football manager each team has got a, a designated id and it was just the wrong id i don't know why and so those are fixed it only took you know to the fourth season to get to that um we are 450 to 1 odds in the league to win the title 10th place expected last season we were 350 to 1 and we ended up in eighth so maybe we'll i wouldn't put money on us um <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. I mean, it puts the it a little in perspective that we paid sixteen grand for Connor Powell. Like that wouldn't have saved us. It doesn't really matter. The board are willing to let us spend thirteen thousand euros. I've whittled it down to six grand, and we have some transfer budget. This is like we we had a payout uh for the players and whatever. We still got the random thirty-five grand, which must be from the chairman that came in as as income. Um, whew, people, it is looking grim. We we did a money league; it generated like four grand. So that's the weird thing that I've noticed. Now that we're up at this division, it's like the fans don't come out to watch us, right? Like. When we were in the first division, we could bring in Shelburne, Cork City, and Shamrock Rovers and generate like 15 grand. Because I guess that's like the spectacle. And now that we're there, it doesn't generate as much revenue. Which is very odd to me. I don't know why. And so like all of these are like a thousand. UCD asked us to play. It was 1,500. They smashed us. Uh, th this one, because they're still affiliated to us, even though they shouldn't be, is four grand. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like, we literally have to make cup runs. That's our challenge this year. Because if we finish an eighth again and get another 40 grand, that's not going to help. We even got new sponsors. I told you we were waiting on sponsors. Main kit is up to 17.75K, and and the additional kit sponsor is 9.5K, and they're correct amounts. And they're two- and three-year deals. So that's good, but it doesn't – I mean, it, it – it's not chipping away. It's not chipping away, my friends. Um, we, uh, oh, it's so bad. I, I, I'm trying to be positive, but it is, it is not looking good. 
we we have to pretty much get i think into the europa league spots to try and generate some revenue for next season and i don't know how likely that is um let's show you the outs so we've loaned two players because i was like i 35 a week you're too much mate like send them out so we're getting our 70 euro a week back which isn't really going to help but it does help a little bit um we have signed two players from bray wanderers as you can tell we have brought back on a fr not on a free but like on a uh a, a, a zero uh wage uh loan anthony o'reilly because last season he wasn't on loan with us last season what is that he didn't make a single appearance I guess we we lock we we locked up the loan in 2020. He went ahead and came on over, but he made what two starts and six subs in the league for Dundalk, and so he was like, okay, I'm actually gonna play. Sure, sure. Um, and again, it's on a it's on a backup contract, but we're gonna play him. Um, it's just if if for some reason we had some amazing players come in, you know, w we wouldn't be obligated to play him. So that's Anthony O'Reilly, Hugh Douglas. We already showed you the the ginger ninja or ginger tall lanky i mean he's, he's quite good we've been playing him at right back um because we have to he looks quite good and gavin hallahan quite good i was i was planning on playing him here if we like went with a four two three one like we were gonna get crazy and then we got anthony o'reilly and i was like okay like they can kind of go back and forth. He he can do the box to box. He's he's quite good. He's three twenty five a week, but I I feel like he's worth it. He's on a two year deal, um, and then he's gonna get old, and you know it'll be time to let him go. Um, released players: John Eastpolm, Alex Aspil, Shane Costello, Jack Watson, Connor Keeley, Cody Mulhall, David Casty. This represented one, two, three, four, five, six. That's fifteen hundred in wages, and David Cassidy was ninety five. And I wished I could have kept him, like on a on a appearance only contract, leave him as the captain, let him tutor stuff like that as a staff member. But he wanted one hundred and fifty a week, and we just could we just we just couldn't do it. And all these other players were two fifty a week, and it was just I was I was starting to panic about the wage budget. So you could argue we could, we should have kept Shane, like. That's a fair argument. He wanted more money anyway, but we just couldn't do it. We we have replaced our head physio, the eight physiotherapy and temperamental, with Nigel Fitzharris, who's a 16 and balanced. The unfortunate thing is all of our staff members now are making at least 250 a week, whereas prior, pr prior they were like 80, 85 a week because we had them from when we got promoted, and that's been a problem. Um, we've signed another physio. The other one wanted too much money. He wanted to be the head physio. I said no. And then he was like mad. And then he wanted more money. And I was like, no. And, and this is an upgrade. Christian Emmons on a 13. He could probably be the future head physio. That's just kind of how we'll rotate them in. We've also lost Billy Murray, which is annoying because we are paying for his continental a, but, uh, the board, when, when we went professional and got promoted, they actually slashed one of our U19 coaching spots. Like, they let us have a, a, a manager and an assistant, but not a coach. And so his contract was running out, and he wanted too much money, and I couldn't really offer him a spot anyway. So we've lost we've lost the staff member. <laughs> oh, it's... It's not... It's... Let, let me just show you the squad. We got McGinnis, Douglas covering right back. Tommy Tierney and Adiyinka are going to rotate. Jack, uh, Vice Captain Jack there, holding down that DCL spot. Th this is for our, our home farm game, which we are favored for. So we're going to rotate in because we kind of have to. We we don't have the... So like, okay, so imagine this is not Ian Quinn and instead it's Connor Powell, okay? Um, Stephen Fitzgerald... One and a half star is going to play because we're rotating, right? Zach, o I'll show this to you. So Liam Kerrigan is back. We loaned him again because we, anything we can get for free, we were like, okay. But I did want to, you know, you guys, I got a lot of comments on like, you carry a big squad. So I was like, fine, we'll carry a smaller squad. But oh man, it makes me nervous. 
Um, Jack Ludwig isn't our normal uh, right winger. We are in a 4-2-3-1 because I want to see if we can pull it off against the squad. Anthony O'Reilly, Jamie Walsh doesn't normally play, and John O'Neill is a backup. So if you take out Ian Quinn, okay, he's not normally in the first team. Jamie Walsh temporarily is. Okay, so that's fine. Dill McGuire, Adayinka, Wiltshire, Dalton, Fox, Waters. I did, honestly, I tried to I tried to sell Waters. No one wanted him. It was a, There's an interesting thing. When you go to offer to clubs, it says, uh, there's a thing up at the top right, I'm not going to risk doing it, that says, talk to Marty about it first. And it gave me the, the, one of the options. I, I've not seen it. I think it's new in FM 18 or 19, is, was to say, I'm trying to raise some funds. And he was like, okay, well, let's see what happens. And like took it well. And then nobody came in, and then I dropped the 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 transfer listing, and he scored three goals in two games. So we we kind of can't afford to lose him now. Um, and and even if we could get forty k for him, that's not going to rescue us. So he he serves a better purpose by being on the squad. Uh, Gavin Hallahan, Dylan McGlade, right winger. Zach O'Neill again has been injured and has not played a game yet in the league. He had pulled ankle ligaments. A little worried about him from a physical standpoint. As you can see, he's kind of dropped off a little bit concentration. Uh, I don't want to lose Zach. Klukas is still here. Connor Lang has another for the, I want to say, second year in the row. At least a torn hamstring. He had a tight ham. I thought he had another injury, but I guess a torn hamstring. I was thinking of the spring knee ligaments. Uh, so he's got a torn hamstring. He's out for three months. That's good. Connor Powell and Pierce Kavna is uh, one of our youngsters that we've pulled up. Just I was trying to get him time in the in the team, but then once Connor went down, I was kind of like, well, <laughs> maybe we keep him around. So this looks bigger than it is, but imagine, okay, so we got 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, but you take out Quinn, that's 24. Walsh, not normally, they're 23. And that's pretty much our squad. So... And, and it's like, once you get past the first team, the depth is really bad, right? Now, Kerrigan hasn't gotten worse, but he's gotten worse in comparison to Hallahan and O'Reilly. So that's part of it that's impacting it a little bit. But, oh, man. We have to make cup runs, people. I, I, this is going to be a lot, right? You got to go through the, uh, the fourth round. to the You win that, you go to, to the quarterfinal to the semifinal, to the final, to get 10K. But 10K, when you're 70 grand in the hole, makes a difference. Um, it's been a minute, but I have had comments back, what, I think it's season two, um, with you guys talking about how, like, in the Sports Cup, it's random that there are some teams in the, in the that get a buy in the first round. So that's actually not good. Like, it w that could have been a home game, and you get a win, you get money for that. We would have taken that gladly. But this is this is all eyes on the FAI Cup first round, my friends. Let's see if I don't think the money's changed. Maybe a little bit. Okay, first round, eleven point two five k, seventeen grand, twenty two and a half grand, thirty four grand, sixty eight grand. Like if we win the cup, we're looking okay, I think. But I am I'm so nervous. It is unbelievable how nervous I am. So. Um, we have a chief scout and a scout. We've got full staff here. Um, if you do the comparison here, I, oh, let me just show you this. I'm not going to do what I did the one time. I don't have the, the attributes from the last episode. Um, but <laughs> that's just <laughs> decisions, uh, first touch, passing strength, work rate, uh, or was that? Yeah, passing strength, work, teamwork, all worst of the league. Um, average aggression. We have the best leadership. Ah, come on, lads. Goalkeepers, reflexes, aerial. We got a really good goalkeeper, so hopefully that can help us out. Defense, we can jump. We don't even have the acceleration and the pace. Midfield, we have stamina now and decision making. So, like, some things have improved a little bit. Strikers, we have the acceleration. So, with that having been said, it, we're not the worst in the league at everything like we were. Okay? Um, it has improved a little bit. A little bit. Not, not a whole lot. But with that having been said, one of the things I did is I went to a long pitch. I wonder if that shows it here. Under facilities. Yeah. 
115 by 70. We were playing 115 by 55 last season. It does an interesting thing. I don't remember, I don't recall this doing this uh, when I looked at it last time, which means I just didn't see it. But it tells you when you go to select the pitch dimension, what style of play plays well on it. So on 115 by 70, favors teams that play direct and obviously on the wings. Um, because on 115 by 55, it says it's it, like it mentioned it would be congested and you'd have to be able to pass it through the middle or something like that. And I'm like, well, we're not good at passing. So hopefully by widening it out, that gives our wingers more room to operate. And then the obviously the length allows us to ping a, a, that long ball over and have our, our fast strikers or our accelerating strikers run onto it and smash it home. In the first two games, it's worked. In this game, we, we got actually proper FM'd. To be honest with you, we created five clear-cut chances and two half chances to their, like, two clear-cut chances and three half chances. And they came back and and, and equalized in the 71st minute. I wasn't too upset because it's Cork City, but we smashed them. And in the Waterford, let, let, let me show you Waterford, the match stats. Unbelievable. Um, equal shots. At one point, we were, like, nine for nine or seven for seven and then, like, nine for eight. Uh, or eight for nine on target, like 11 shots on target out of 14 to their five out of 14. We created a clear cut chance of three half chances. It like, I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that the, the pitch is wider and we can play that long ball over the top. Maybe it's the fact we have a smaller squad and I did a heavy preseason training because it, it gives you the, the in, in training. Um, well, it doesn't show it here, but when you go into preseason, after you've selected how long it's going to be, it says, so what kind of training schedule do you want to have? And if you like, you can choose light, normal, heavy, tactical, or technical. And on heavy, it says it's going to be really physical, but the investment on the front end makes it less likely that the team will become jaded at the end of the season because they're exhausted. And with us having a smaller squad, even though it doesn't look like it, it looks like this is what we had last season. It's really not. With us having a smaller squad, I thought that's going to be important. And then, of course, Connor like rips his hamstring and Zach O'Neill pulls ankle ligaments and whatever. But I'm hoping that pays off towards the end of the season. But from a tactical standpoint, we are going to play this today just because I want to see if against small teams we can do something like a little different other than like I, I'm a little tired of just parking the bus and playing counter to be completely honest with you. And we've got two two players that can play advanced playmakers. So I'm hoping we could take advantage that way. So that's kind of the plan. Um, I guess I could show you some of the youngsters we've pulled up. Ian Quinn, look at him. Oh, yeah, three-star potential ability. He's he's as good as Dylan uh, – what's his face? Dylan McGuire, except Dylan costs us money if we play him, right? We're already paying Ian Quinn 35 a week. So we can leave Dylan on the bench, hopefully. Jamie Walsh is an attacking midfield. We've got him working on the on the left wing because he already kind of knows the attacking midfield left wing. But really, like if you compare him to, if you remember Cody Mulhall, he's got slightly worse determination. He's got one better dribbling, I think better passing. He's got pretty decent or similar acceleration. The pace is a little off, but like he's not that much worse and he's not 250 a week. So we had to make a bunch of really tough decisions, like unhappy for me decisions. You're thinking, we stayed up, lads. We're, we're going to make it. And then, like, all the financial stuff keeps hitting and hitting and hitting. And then the board's like, yeah, go spend all the money. And I'm like, eh, you don't know about that. So that's where we're at. Pierce Cavanaugh, I think I showed him to you already. He's kind of like a John O'Neill. Um, but he just came in, so he's cheap, and we're going to bring him up. So we, essentially, from a strike standpoint, we got Waters and Klukas. And then backing them up, um, and Connor Lang, but he's out for whatever till May. We've got O'Neill and Kavna on the left. We've got Jamie Walsh and waters really over there and Fox really over there. That's kind of my, my order of preference would be Fox and then waters and then Walsh because I want waters playing the four, four, two up top uh, attacking mid. We get O'Reilly can play there and uh, Gavin can play there on the right. Check which doesn't really know it, but it, you know, he can learn it, I guess. Um, but really our starter is McGlade and our backup is Dalton. In the midfield, that's where it gets a little iffy. That's where Gavin's been playing. 
Obviously, Zach O'Neill is there. Kieran Wiltshire with his two and a half stars. And then Kerrigan and Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald is a 19-year-old. that we're, This is the guy that uh, last season, what did he do? He tore his knee ligaments for three months. So we're trying to, you know, rescue his, his potential by playing him. And then on the back line, this is really Powell's spot with McGuire backing up. And Quinn's going to go back down to the U19s. Vice Captain Jack. Tierney rotating with Adayinka and Douglas covering the right and Jack or Tierney covering the right. He's like, we could really use probably a right back backup or starter so that we could put Douglas in his preferred role. Um, but I just, the, the other thing I've noticed is the premier division teams. Now, if they want to loan somebody to you, they want you to pay 50% of the wages if they play and, and hundred percent if they don't play and that costs money. So this is building a nation, right? So I guess we'll just build it with Derek O'Neill. Or, or or Shane McCaffrey, who's a really ball-winning midfielder. Oh, gosh. Quite the challenge. So I hope you're going to be entertained this season. Uh, I'm really terrified we're going to go get down. We're going to go down and get fired because we are. if we go down, our wage budget is going to be untenable, right? Like a disaster in, in the waiting. Um, I don't know what else to tell you, people. Dynamics are all right, you know. Like, and, and then the other thing is, right? Like, this is the contract year for just about everybody, so we're gonna want have players wanting raises. So we, it, we almost have to make it to the Europa League, and I don't even know how much money that is. Um, but we, it, it would really help. So let's check on Ireland. We're building a nation, right? Let's look at the whoop, at the schedule. Go back here. I don't think I did this last season, except uh, we knew they got knocked out of the Euros. Tough group, right? Um, lost to Norway in a friendly. Lost to Spain. Oh, they got promoted in the UEFA Nations League, and then they lost to Portugal and Spain, which expected. Um, they got trounced. They only scored two goals out of four games. But again, I, if to me, you, yeah, probably sounds right, right? Um, and so now they're in World Cup qualification with Azerbaijan, Hungary, Portugal, uh -oh, Gibraltar, and Slovenia. So they're going to be aiming for that second best finish. I think they've got a shot. But can they be the best second best? I think that's how it works in Europe. Um, you can pause this and take a look if you like. Seamus Coleman. Oh, don't, don't be a leg. Okay, twist an angle. Um, still got Jeff Hendrick, Harry Otto, Robbie Brady. So, it, if you're from Ireland, this is your national team. Let me know if any of those stand out to you. James McCarthy's still playing. Where's he at these days? Oh, I, th I was like, where? Did, what, who's he playing for? Okay, he's in League Oh, Interesting. How did he get that? Oh, no, 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 no. How did he get there? Oh, that's not even the right James McCarthy. That's not the McCarthy I was thinking of. Okay, never mind. Shane Duffy is only 29. Really? Interesting times, my friends. So that's what we got going on. Um, I'm going to take us to the to the game. I guess. Here we go. All right, my friends. Oh, boy. 1 to 20 odds. We have uh, put Adiyinka and Tierney in. Douglas is still the right back. I did bring up that uh, right back I told you, Derek O'Neill, because I would like to be able to sub Douglas out since he's started the first two games. We're just – I think we're going to struggle with injuries this year, and that's because we don't have a big squad. And th I think the worst part, honestly, about all of this is the fact that I can't sign my good youngsters to – like uh, professional contracts because they have to make more than they have to make 250 a week or more. And so like they're stuck on 35. So it's that that's going to impact their, you know, growth and development because they're not training as much. Yeah. Pick up where you left off lads, even though most of you weren't on the pitch the last two games, but John O'Neill. I love that. I love that. Some people get upset when you talk to another player individually. I did. I was playing on extended highlights just to kind of check stuff out. But uh, we'll go to key highlights just for this because I don't want this to be a six-hour episode for you. 
I'm hoping with our back with our U19 backups, we should be able to get a victory here. If we can't, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Maybe we'll. I didn't even see. I can't remember what the uh, what the attendance was supposed to be like. The same. Zach O'Neill's back. He's only got 86. percent He can go 60 minutes, so we might rotate him in. You know, 20, 30 minutes left, something like that. Come on, boys. Three shots, three on target. O'Reilly. I get to say that again. I'm excited. Liam Kerrigan smacks it home. There we go. There we go. Assisted by Ian Quinn. Four shots, four on target. That's impressive. Are we going to have another game with like 90% on target shots? That I don't know what to make of that. Fitzgerald dancing. Kerrigan. He's got space. Okay. The left back comes forward. He has low self-belief, and his um, determination has gone from 11 to 9 in, like, the last year. Unbelievable. Maybe he believes now. That's his second assist of the game, I think. And John O'Neill has his first goal of the season. With his one concentration. <laughs> I. Um, the problem with John O'Neill is his determination is high. And so I don't want to put him into a mentoring group where it's going to pull his determination down, even if it would potentially bring his concentration up. Quinn's got two assists. He's on 7.7. Mate, believe in yourself. I believe in you. Oh, nine out of six. I thought it was going to be, I thought that said six or six. We're still doing quite well with the percentage, percentage of shots that are on target. If I can get that out. I'm very happy, lads. <laughs> Is there anybody we want to rotate? Not really at this point. I mean, yeah. We're going to risk it. We're going to bring on Derek O'Neill and, and rest Hugh Douglas. It's like, mate, you came in. You did your job. That means Tierney and Adiyanka have to see the game out because we don't have any more center backs. Um, and then we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll take out Fitzgerald for O'Neill at some point, And that's how we're going to roll it, my friends. I'm going to say, I believe in you, mate. I believe in you. It, it, you know, it's, it's not... This is not indicative that we can handle playing a control, you know, possession uh, tactic because we're against a team two divisions below us and it's one to 20 odds for us to win and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, you could argue it could be worse, right? Like, it could be, you know, we we have to go back to playing 4-4-2 counter against this team. I'll say all this and we'll concede two goals here. Easy, lads. Quinn clears it. Nah, you don't have low self-belief, mate. That was a great clearance. That was smart, intelligent. Get it out of the box. On a 7.8, crushing it. Lovely. Ledwidge. I don't... <laughs> mate, you just got called up to the senior team. You might not be complacent at a cup game. I know we're up 2-0, but times can change. You'll have to... Maybe it's the, the ignorance of youth. You're like, oh, we're going to win this game. Like, no, don't get complacent, mate. Kerrigan, smack that. There you go. There you go. Called at top of the box. Anthony O'Reilly with the goal. We might take him off <laughs> and bring Zach O'Neill on. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe that's what we do, lads. I think that's what we do. We, we're trying to pick our battles. Zach O'Neill is not an advanced playmaker. He's a box-to-boxer. Yeah, lads. Let's do some of this. Okay. Is he really a box to box still? I mean, his dribbling is leaves something to be desired. He could play. No, he... okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. There you go. You play your typical. There we go. Okay, there we. Go. Mm. Zach, please don't get hurt. Please, please don't get hurt. Disinterested. Hey, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. I probably should have started McGowan now that we think about it, but I didn't. And I don't want to bring anybody else on because that's a four euro appearance fee that we'd have to pay or six or 15 or whatever, depending on the player. So let's just see it out, lads, please. Come on, keep the clean. Come on. Keep. Oh, what a save, McGinnis, to keep the clean sheet. Don't break your arm doing that, please. So I, I I hope you understand why I showed you this game because you're like mate you're one to twenty odds but the cups 
have the chance to rescue us financially. So this is critically important, really. It really is. So getting some good performances in from our potential starters and our backups. Massive, massive for the team. O'Neal, Ledwidge. Top of the box, Zach O'Neal. What's he got? He's got a pass out to Quinn with the two assists. Can he get a hat trick of assists? No, he, he kind of panicked. Yeah, that's what it, that was going. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a left back. I don't know what to do. George bombs forward. No, nothing going. Sullivan, keep the clean sheet. No. 3-1, that's fine. I, it gets rid of the clean sheet bonus for the defenders and the goalkeeper. That's great, actually. Yes, we don't have to pay that. Come on, that's... <laughs> I felt bad, right? Because we had to we had to drop down to like the on the the cup and season payouts for the squad to low, and even that it was a ton of money that like we don't have. So it feels like we're gonna get potentially like forty two grand or whatever in prize money, and we're gonna pay like thirty grand of it out in bonuses. It's just like, can we not just have a discussion here, guys? Like. Hey, at some point, we could save up enough money to have, like, you know, uh, some barbells in, in the workout because our trading facilities are garbage. Can we just not pay out bonuses and see if we can stay up and then, you know, we can actually pay you guys a little bit more on a, on a weekly basis because we would have a little bit more money? And they're like, mate, I want my bonus, I'm sure. Very, we're going to be super positive as much as we can here. Kerrigan with the player of the match on a 9.1, my friends. Any upsets? Wexford, an extra time over Bray. UCD over Bohemians? Uh, curious, curious. Okay, who do we... Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, good, good, good. Um, do we know who we play? When is the draw, my friends? Let's find out. Stages. Quarterfinal. 222. Let's hop forward. Let's just find out who we're playing to see if we might have a chance to, like, get a run going. Here we go, UCD, uh, or their Leinster Senior League side, knocked off Drahita United. That was the only real upset. Home game. Home game. Small team. Home game. We missed UCD, that's good. Home game. Everybody. Sorry about the cursor. Okay. Okay, yes! The Leinster Senior League side... We'll take them or Cherry Orchard, and it's a home game, my friends. Come on, lads. That is huge. That is huge. When is it? The 12th, I think. So it's down here. That will be our next game. Um, <laughs> we're already to 79 grand. After the home, home farm game, it was at like 69 grand. So apparently, I, I don't know why it went down so much, to be honest with you. Our... Wage budget is six grand, so maybe it, it's the our whole setup. Though our staff cost isn't another four grand, is it? I mean, maybe. No, I mean maybe it is. Oh, it's so bad. Cup runs, cup runs, my friends. Hit the like button. I need your money. I need your money. Send donations to Cabin Tealy FC. Um, if you want to, if you want to buy a sponsorship, please call the, you know, the chairman. Cause he's really that when it says the board, it it's, it's Larry Bass. It's, it's what it is. I just think that's kind of funny. The board say your, your job secure. Larry says my job secure. That's really what they mean. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time. We'll see if we can continue the cup magic. Cause we're going to need to have a good one.